Lent is a great time to change our eating patterns. This is not about losing weight or getting in shape, though paying attention to what we eat should make a difference in our overall health. This is about being more alert. Now, there's the key for us. Fasting has an effect on our mind, and that's what we're seeking to change this Lent. Uh, not the shape of our body, and, but the shape of our mind. Let's take a look at a, a Hollywood movie that helps to illustrate the, the very the strong connection between the mind and the body. I'm sure you recognize our good friend Rocky Balboa, played by Sylvester Stallone. Well, in Rocky III, The Eye of the Tiger, it seems that Rocky has lost his edge, and he even gets defeated by a, a menacing challenger, Clubber Lang, played by Mr. T. And as Rocky reluctantly prepares for a rematch, and it's clear that his heart just isn't in it, his new trainer and former adversary, Apollo Creed, tells him that the key to winning is for Rocky to get back his killer instinct, the eye of the tiger. And that the key to achieving this attitude is through a vigorous training program. In essence, it seems that the Apollo is reminding Rocky that the way to straighten out his head and his heart is through his body. You see, athletes often recognize more quickly than others the very intimate connection between the body and the mind. Now, if you think that this is a bit of a stretch about our faith life and the practice of fasting during Lent, uh, just take a quick look at St. Paul with me and see what it is that St. Paul had to say about 2,000 years before Rocky Balboa and Apollo Creed. In his first letter to the Corinthians, Paul says, Every athlete exercises discipline in every way. They do it to win a perishable crown, but we an imperishable one. Thus I do not run aimlessly. I do not fight as if I were shadow boxing. No, I drive my body and train it for fear that, after having preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. So you see, St. Paul clearly recognized this intimate relationship between the physical and the spiritual. And it's this intimate connection that's at the heart of fasting, a physical activity that we practice in order to bring about a spiritual change. Now, this is nothing new uh, for centuries. The novices who have entered monasteries seeking a closer relationship with God and a deeper spiritual life have been required to begin a regimen that not only involves prayer, but involves fasting and physical labor. You see, monastic spirituality has always known that the way to a person's heart and mind is through the body, and particularly the stomach. And so we can talk about fasting, a physical practice, as a key to our spiritual renewal during Lent. So let's take a look at some tips from fasting. Uh, you'll notice I titled the webinar, Making Lent Simple But Not Easy. Well, that's because things like fasting are not at all easy. Uh, with that in mind, these tips can really help us and help those that we teach to be more successful in the practice of fasting during Lent. So let's take a look, starting with number one. Tell the least number of people that you're fasting, but be sure to tell someone. I'm going to come back to more about that telling someone later, but the point of this first one is we're not to be tooting our horn about the, our fasting. Jesus warned us against that. By the same token, it's very helpful to share your goal with at least one other person. As I mentioned before, we're going to come back to that at the end and explain why that's so important. Next, turn off the TV. Uh, it, it really turns out that TV commercials and sitting still for such a long period of time can really make you hungry, uh, especially late at night. Oh, there's nothing worse than when you're sitting there getting ready to go to bed and they've got those you know, pizza and burger and shrimp and all kinds of food going across your screen. Oh, it makes us hungry, and the sitting still doesn't, hurt, doesn't help at all. So turn off that TV, okay? Uh, the next one is to combine your fasting with prayer. 
So don't just skip a meal and sit there thinking, gee, I just skipped a meal. <laughs> you try to make it a prayerful practice. Begin that time with some prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to help you as you go through this period of time without food that you would normally have. The next tip is to designate a, a purpose for your fast. Uh, I think right now we have a, a very good example is that we could certainly fast as a way of being in solidarity with all the people who are suffering in Haiti. The, the victims of the earthquake. It really helps to connect your fasting with a purpose. Next, I recommend that you don't just jump into the deep end of the pool when it comes to fasting. Start by gradually reducing your intake and then maybe intensify to skipping a meal, one meal each week. You really need to be careful about this. We don't want anyone uh, fainting on us uh, during the Lenten season. So these are some good tips, but wait, there's more. Okay, we got some more tips on fasting. The next thing I'd like to recommend is try to increase your liquid intake. You can reduce your sensation of hunger by drinking more fluids, more liquids. So just be careful not to overhydrate either. Uh, the next tip is to use your hunger as a reminder of your spiritual hunger for God. So in other words, every time you feel your stomach rumble or growl, kind of let it act as a, a sacramental, a, a reminder of your spiritual hunger for God. Our next tip, fast with others. Try to uh, benefit from some positive peer pressure. In other words, seek to be a part of a, a group that commits to fasting at the same time and for the same purpose so that you're not just doing this alone, but it's a group experience. Next, try to experience solidarity with those who suffer from hunger every day. And use this opportunity of being hungry to, to grow in your own sensitivity to the problem of world hunger. And then finally, donate in money the equivalent of the food that you would have eaten. So fasting begins to take on a connection to almsgiving, which we are going to explore very shortly. Now, remember when Jesus was tempted in the desert, his first temptation was about food, to turn a stone into bread, to take care of his own physical needs. But instead, he remained focused on what, is, what it is that truly sustains him, the Word of God. And that's what fasting does for us. It helps us, it reminds us that God alone sustains us.